If you are actually reading your way through the Bible, one of the things you've already found in reading through Genesis and Exodus is there are some passages and some things that happen that are frankly a little disturbing. And we find that again in Exodus chapter 32. The trouble starts because Moses is up on the mountain and communing with God. God is giving Moses uh, the law and the Ten Commandments and all this. And while he's doing that, uh, at the beginning of chapter 32, basically it says that uh, when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down the mountain, they, they just go right back into sin mode, if you will. And so they think, well, we need something to worship. And so they say, we don't know what's happened to Moses. He may never come back down on the mountain again. Who knows? Maybe he had an accident. Maybe he fell in a crevice. Who knows what happened to him? So um, they end up giving all their gold to Aaron so that he can make a golden calf, a golden calf. And so it starts with chapter 32, verse 1. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Well, this reflects, sadly, a very human tendency. One, to forget God and all that God has done for us in our life. Think of everything that God has done to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt to this point. And just like them, it can be easy for us to forget all that God has done. And secondly, the idea of we can make gods out of our own hands. We can make gods out of the things that we can make. As if anything we can make with our own hands could be God. And so they make this golden calf and they start to worship it. Meanwhile, up on the mountain in verse 7, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I have commanded them. Isn't that the story of humanity that we're going to see again and again through the pages of the Bible? And I think it's kind of funny, as you can tell, because I'm smiling, that God doesn't say, my people. It's just like a parent when a kid misbehaves, right? Do you know what your son did? You know, do you know what your daughter did? When the kid does something great, it's like, look what my son did, right? But when it's bad, it's yours. Well, that's kind of how God speaks to Moses. But as I said at the beginning... You know, there are some things in these early pages and books of the Bible that we may find disturbing or shocking. And part of it is later in chapter 32, when Moses comes back and sees what's gone on, and he calls, who's on the Lord's side? Come to be with me. And it's the sons of Levi. And they go through and they kill over 3,000 of their own people. Um, and that's hard to process, um, the violence that we see in many of these early books of the Bible. But we also have to hold on to that it's a reflection of the desire for holiness among God's people and the desire to have people who are first and foremost wholeheartedly following the Lord. But it's understandable uh, that some of these chapters will find hard. So in your own life, hold on to God. Don't forget all that God has done for you and never worship anything that's made by human beings.